When considering what to make, we thought long and hard about what would actually be useful in the event of a zombie apocalypse, and after close analysis of the media, we found that the most dangerous event would be hungry people, with a name similar to Larry, eating all the food supplies. It was thus decided that our project would be a machine to enforce rationing of vital food supplies in the form of crackers by dispensing them from the store according to the software running on the pipe. As always, enthusiasm led our idea to become much more complex, involving a system to automatically place a slice of cheese and some sauce onto the cracker, secured by facial and fingerprint recognition. For our <laughs> cracker dispensing mechanism, we're thinking sort of a conveyor but circular. So it's so it's, <laughs> yes, a conveyor but circular. It's so a conveyor. so it's like a disc with another disc on top of it that has a sort of cracker-shaped hole cut out of it, so that a cracker can fall in here, and then when this rotates, the cracker is dragged along with it, so that we can we can apply the cheese here and maybe the raw sauce here, <laughs> and then uh, we're still thinking about how we're going to uh, give it to the user. We might have a servo mechanism to push the cracker out, or it might be just a sort of tray that the user pulls out, and then they can access the cracker. And so we're just going to turn this with a stepper motor, uh, which seems to be okay, and that's how we're going to do it. So since this project was mostly mechanical, we had an opportunity to design parts for the school laser cutter. Uh, both Joe and I designed parts and we cut everything with 5 or 3mm acrylic. The greatest challenge was figuring out how to uh, export the designs from Fusion 360 to the school's decrepit software. We finally found a solution which involved transferring files across many different design softwares, which finally produced appropriately sized pieces, like so. To connect the Lego rods to uh, stepper motors, uh, a Lego to stepper motor converter was designed, which we 3D printed. Uh, this posed its own set of problems, including having to reprint 10 times, partially due to Joe sending the wrong file over email twice. For this project, we needed to control three stepper motors from the Pi. Since I was looking for an opportunity to try this out, I designed a Pi Hat PCB which gave us the required six high current outputs, controlled exclusively from the Pi. Although I made one small mistake, which I quickly fixed with a piece of wire, the board worked perfectly after I had written a Python library to control it. The board only uses six GPIO pins, but allows the Pi to control each output individually, giving it the capability to control six DC motors instead, should that be needed. Okay, so uh, here is our first prototype of the first pieces. So we've laser cut these out of 3mm acrylic. So this is the top disc, which is going to be rotating free like this, powered by a Lego axle here. And you can see as we turn it around, this slot here will hold the cracker. So first the cracker stack is here, and uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, the cracker stack, and a cracker will fall into the slot, and then we'll move it around to here, where the cheese will be applied. So this is an attachment point for our future cheese application mechanism, then raw sauce, and then here, where there's going to be a sort of tray here where you can pull out the cracker and eat it. And so this is all going to be powered by a Lego motor, not a Lego motor, a stepper motor, which is going to be attached to the Lego thingy by means of a 3D printed part, which is exciting. So uh, we still need to design these two pieces and the 3D printed part, but it's coming on nicely. What, what oh, are we doing right now? Um, we are using the 3D printer's Pronter face, which is exactly what it says it's called, uh, to 3D print some extensions for the legs.
Our idea for a logging system was based off of the fact that we needed a secure rationing system, making sure that the person who wanted the crackers had not taken more crackers than they were assigned. Also, we thought that a simple password would be a bit boring, so we had the idea to log in with your biometrics. So, because of that, I coded the facial recognition system using OpenCV, which now, after a bit of tinkering, can pretty reliably figure out who is looking at the camera. It does this by processing the images that were created when you register to convert it to a grayscale image of just the face. Once it has done this, it trains the recognizer to recognize that face type as that of your user, allowing it to verify and log you in as yourself, but also make sure that it is indeed you. It does this by using the standard frontal face Haar Cascade in conjunction with the OpenCV image recognizer, allowing it to accurately calculate whose the face in the photo is most likely to be. I wrote the GUI for the machine, a simple and clean piece of code which allowed the user to easily access their crackers. Now that we had the code worked out and the hardware sorted, it was time to hack it all together. It's we finally managed okay, to the time it's, 12. it's 10 to 12. <laughs> the time is now 10 to 12. The time is and Atto has finally Atto. exported Jimbo.xml <laughs> and is about it's... to commit. Okay, Atto is not going well. Oh, no, that's the same Oh, well, that's a bit of a problem, isn't it? Mm, it that... is a slight problem. <laughs> is it indeed, Atto? Yeah, we're having a little bit of problem. And meanwhile, over here, Will is on his phone, yeah. Good, good yeah, stuff. I'm After messages. this professional hog glue and pronto face over here. So, things are happening. Alright, so it's now quarter to one. Atto is still trying to get this facial recognition to work, which it isn't, and it's quite sad. Will is still over there doing who knows what at this point. Super gluing things. And Joe is like, I don't know, I, I, just, I just don't even know what we're doing anymore. I'm trying to get things to work. This is actually just, oh. I'm actually so stupid. It's just, it, there's just no words. No words. No words. No words. No words. No words to even say. It is currently 1.20 in the morning. And our, the facial recognition, after retaking Atto's photos and not photoshopping them for some reason, has finally been able to accurately yes, recognise me, I'm, Joe, I'm no and Atto all separately. Uh, no, I Joe is no longer spinning on his chair. Our brains yeah, are starting to die. Please so, <laughs> yeah. For now, for now, we've got that working. We've got this constructed. I mean, to be honest, I think we're just going to call it a night. So. I'm dying. Indeed, night. good night. Joe, what are you doing right now? I am connecting all the things for the last time, hopefully. Uh, no, that's the wrong way around. Oh my god. So that's like... Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. No. No, that's wrong too. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, so this is the first test of our brand new product, Rational Buy. Yes, okay, this is the first official test yeah. with Atto, our test do, testy, <laughs> test room. Uh, test! Okay, so it tries to scan his face, but because the face thing is a little dodgy, it fails, and the fingerprint no, sensor failing, activates. Activate. He does that, and it succeeds. So the screen enables, and then he presses the cracker to dispense a cracker. And then a beautiful screen comes up. And we look into the machine. <laughs> Why is the cheese going first? Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Oh, oh, no, 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 don't do that. It does don't it do that, itself. you force the stuff. It does it by oh. itself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, okay, the first step. the button once more. We look through the window as the system works perfectly. Cracker! Cheese! <laughs>
this is our first test. So Joe's pressing the button this time, and the beautiful screen displays, and crack is in position. Cheese oh, is cheese dispensed. Is no! Test four. Okay, this is our fifth test. Okay, so this is test 23 at login. Oh, okay. The cracker is actually The cracker is in position. The cheese the is... The cheese has fallen, basically. <laughs> oh, oh, no, the cheese fell. Oh, no, the cheese fell. Oh, no. The sauce. The sauce. sauce. The sauce. Uh, put the cheese back. The squeezing the sauce. The sauce is exploded onto the cracker. This is test 25. Sorry, 20. Sorry, 24. 25. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. Close enough. Okay, Atto, just log in over there, and then we're ready to see this one. We'll... Oh, the crack is in position. Cheese. The cheese, yes, the cheese, cheese has fallen falling. perfectly. Oh, it's in position. Oh, oh, oh the sauce is down. The sauce oh, is clean. the sauce is perfect. That is perfect. I mean, it's going to wait a while now, but it's still perfect. You chose this number. Oh, okay, that's fine. Butter. Oh, and it turns around, and Atto take out Takes the very out. first slice. And eats it. <laughs> 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 In the end, we managed to get most of our system to work. The cracker dispensing worked perfectly, and after a small adjustment, so did the cheese. On the software side, everything functioned very reliably except for the facial recognition, which needed quite a bit of tweaking to identify people correctly. This is why we chose to use a fingerprint sensor in conjunction with it. Our main problem was getting the viscosity of the source right, which ended up being our greatest hindrance. All in all, if in an apocalypse the system were secured in a box, it could be very useful in helping those with limited self-control to ration their vital supplies, even if some crackers got a little crushed in the process.